Hi, I'm Yusha Singh, and I bring you 30 insights into the art of surviving, thriving through, and not dying of a generation gap. And these are for all boomers, right through all Zoomers. Insight 9. Last year, around this time, India and Pakistan were in a standoff, you will remember. Now, Indian actor Priyanka Chopra, also United Nations Goodwill Ambassador since 2016, tweeted that February, Jai Hind, hashtag Indian Armed Forces. Later that year, a Pakistani-American woman attending a beauty conference that featured Chopra in Los Angeles called her a hypocrite. She said, you are a UNICEF ambassador for peace and you are encouraging nuclear war against Pakistan? There's no winner in this. This online crisis led to a demand for Chopra's removal from her UN role. This is an example of the new cancel culture or outrage culture or call out culture. It's a modern internet phenomena. Anyone, usually a celebrity, read brand, who says or does something questionable or problematic may face social boycott and end up losing their reputation, fan following and money. The judgment is quick and there is no room for dialogue. Does cancellation have any tangible or long-term effects on the lives of those cancelled? There is debate on that. But it's important for all of us in the professional world to understand and appreciate this phenomena. A new change is coming on in society. There is a court of swift public opinion on Twitter that is asking for more accountability from celebrities and companies. Back in our days, we put velvet vocal cords, rhyming skill, money, music, acting talent and good looks on a pedestal of moral purity. My grandmother BG worshipped butter slippers, Macaulay's toothpaste, and she loved Balraj Sani. But what are the issues that young people are cancelling today? Abuse, discrimination, violence, injustice, corruption, industry-related oppression. Now what's wrong with that? Critics are calling it smartphone activism. Just make a noise and sit back. Some have called the social shaming scary. It's been referred to as a cold, tribal and simplified way of thinking. There's also a view that cancelling instead of counselling does not leave any room for improvement. It's been described as an equivalent of putting a bandage over a bullet wound. In fact, at an Obama Foundation Youth Convention last year in October, even former US President Barack Obama criticized the issue and said that cancel culture is toxic. This idea that you're never compromised and always politically woke, he said, and all that stuff, you should get over that quickly, he told the young leaders. But what really goes on in the minds of those quick fingers that cancel? When influential celebrities make an off-handed, racist, homophobic or sexist remark, it makes a fan's real life experience more concrete. So how does a marginalized person react then? She exercises her right to be heard and cancels them. If the powerful lose influence as a result of cancelling, well, the marginalized groups have been cancelled in reality since forever simply because they exist. And one might ask, how do tweets compare with genocides, executions, assassinations, political imprisonments, and official bans in the past? Cancel culture is a product of an unequal society. It's an expression of angst and exhaustion at society's injustices. What happens when brands are cancelled by consumers? How do companies monitor an online crisis that comes out of a generational shift? Do they understand the context and the nuances involved? Before taking a stance on the issue, do brands ensure complete alignment across their businesses? For last year's words belong to last year's language, T.S. Eliot wrote, 
and next year's words await another voice. This Zoomer Boomer is ready to listen. Book me to speak at Nirjasingh.com and watch out for Insight 10.